Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have a few people with us uh, this evening, and this is the public input uh, section of the meeting. Um, we do limit any public uh, input to three minutes. So if anyone would like to address this commission, please do so at the center microphone, and please give us your name and your address before you speak. Go ahead. Hearing through the mask. Okay. Um, My name is Lauren Laughlin. I am resident of East Avenue. Avenue. Thank you. For one second. Now you're good. All right. Do you want me to do that again? Okay. My name is Lauren Hoffland, and I reside at 329 St. Clair Avenue in Sheboygan. Okay, uh, some of my neighbors received a letter yesterday from John Powers, who would like to relocate the Sheboygan Beer Garden from Kiwanis Park to DeLand Home Park, a small community park which abuts eight residences, including my own, two of which are among the largest residential taxpayers in the city. Mr. Powers is asking to operate a business in my neighborhood, a residential area not zoned for commercial use. Mr. Powers, who lives in Milwaukee, is asking to locate a bar in my neighborhood, in my backyard, six days per week, while he lives quietly 50 miles away. None of our neighbors was notified of today's meeting, and there are many who would have liked to be here. On their behalf, we ask that this discussion be tabled until proper notification is given to those who will be greatly affected by this decision. Kiwanis Park is designated as a community park which has amenities built to accommodate community events. As such, it has adequate parking set aside for this use. Unlike Kiwanis Park, which is a significant distance away from a residential area, DeLand Home Park is a neighborhood park, literally in the backyard of four homeowners and in the front yard of three. There is no parking except on the street. The second paragraph of the letter that we received from Mr. Powers states, the beer and wine garden is not a bar. I believe that a business which sells beer and wine is a bar. Because it is a bar, the park will need to be fenced in, limiting access to those in the neighborhood and making it unavailable to the nearly 50 families who rent DeLand Home Park for parties and gatherings each summer. In addition, a wine bar recently opened at the marina. Is it necessary to open another one across the street? Today's agenda will bring forward a proposed, quote, reorganization of DeLand Home Park, end quote, which will, according to Joe Curlin, quote, make the process easier. He and Mr. Powers are operating under the assumption that the neighbors and neighborhood impacted by locating a beer garden are actually looking for a way to make the process easier. I am puzzled how they could have come to this conclusion without talking to any of us. Although we were only given hours to organize, the neighbors we have spoken to are not in favor of this proposal. <coughs> Excuse me. The prospect of even a fraction of the thousands of people who use the beaches, walking and biking trails, or attend events at DeLand Park, walking up the hill into our neighborhood for a quick beer, frightens us, will lower our property values, and is not in the best interest of our our neighborhood and our citizens. Thank okay. you. Your three minutes is up. Thank you. Good timing. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else wish to address the group? If not, we will close. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to announce myself. My name is Ryan Brunette, and I reside 1121 North 4th Street in Sheboygan. <clears throat> I just jotted down some notes because I didn't know about this meeting today. So a little bit uh, a little bit quick, I'm putting my thoughts together. 
Just uh, a little bit concerned about uh, Beer Garden being relocated into the residential neighborhood. Obviously, when you think of a beer garden, you don't think of some place where you go to get food or necessarily any other fair, or any other, other type of services. It is a beer garden focused on beer sales and beer consumption. I do um, have a little bit of concern. You know, I have kids that, uh, that live right overlooking the park, kind of a, a range of ages on there. We have some that are teenage years, which uh, has one end of the spectrum as far as concern, where, you know, they could potentially be exposed to some sort of alcohol or beer sales, something where, you know, we have our kids have their friends come over and, you know, just kind of gets, uh, gets out of hand or more difficult to control that potential dangerous exposure. And, uh, hold on, difficult to breathe with the mask here. <laughs> and um, on the other spectrum, I have a younger daughter who uh, is in grade school age. You do get concerned, as uh, Lauren had mentioned, the parking access is only um, directly on the street. There's obviously gonna be a huge spike up of people parking directly on the street, coming and going. It would be a six day a week uh, exposure there. And you would be concerned about, uh, you know, everybody going there with the purpose of uh, meeting at the beer garden. You would assume they'd be consuming alcohol, consuming beer, and just the uptick of danger where, God forbid, if something would happen, you know, where people are coming and going and leaving and could potentially get into some sort of accident. That covers my initial thoughts on it. Thank you. Any other? Yes, yeah, sir. Good afternoon, I'm Sam Hanley, 324 St. Clair Avenue. In addition to the, all, of the, all of the great points that have been made already, my own concern stems first from my 12-year-old daughter who plays in that park often with her friends. I think this is not a great idea to even consider moving forward with the beer garden. The first word is beer. That's not what I want to have around my children. It's not, it's not why we moved to that area. It is zoned residential, it's very peaceful, it's quiet, it's beautiful. We're not interested in that at all. <clears throat> Further concerns that I wish you would consider, please, are the number of people that will come into the area, projected sales, I don't know what those are, nobody has told us any of that. We didn't learn about this until, I don't know, two hours ago. So this is the best we can do and it feels, feels very fast. I would like to know what the rules for the anticipated area and the surrounding areas. As you can tell, that area is zoned, it's completely surrounded excuse me, surrounded by a residential zone. So it sticks into our residence area. I would be concerned about the enforcement of all of the extra people and all of the, the noise violations that would likely be incurred. I would be concerned about the hours and who would really enforce them and stick to them, what we would do about getting people out of the area in the timely fashion. I would be concerned about the cleanup of the area, which is already a problem, as Mr. Brunette pointed out at some point, for um, Fourth of July gatherings and so forth. The grass, the landscaping would need to be, would be taken care of extra. Where's that money gonna come from? Who's gonna pay the extra policemen to, to monitor the area, the overflow into the people? I, uh, I just want you guys to think about, this is a quiet, beautiful park where children play. It's not, it's not a bar. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Do we have anyone else who wishes to address the group? If not, then I will close the uh, public input uh, part of the, uh, of the meeting tonight. Uh, Thank you very much for taking the time to address this commission. Uh, we really do appreciate this. Uh, just by way of information, um, this commission only meets every three months. 
And uh, the idea tonight was really to uh, look at this option and just give some information to this commission. Uh, this project cannot go forward without the, uh, the approval of the plan commission, the council, and also a meeting, a neighborhood meeting would be conducted. So uh, there is a process. Uh, again, tonight was just a option that uh, was suggested and to give us uh, as a commission a, a chance to just review that. So please keep this in mind. No one was trying to uh, push anything through behind, behind anyone's back. It's just the process. So on to agenda item number two. It would be the approval of the minutes of our November 17th meeting. A motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair also. Aye. Thank you. Chair also votes aye. The motion carries. Okay, items for discussion and possible action. Reorganization of the D-Land Park, of the entire D-Land Park area into uh, three separate parks. Sorry, I'm Joe. sorry, sorry, Mike. Um, it, it's hard to take um, uh, minutes knowing who. Yeah. I move. So okay. in we'll feed. And then we need to find out. I'm moving too fast. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. that's okay. Just do a roll call because it doesn't all the eyes. Okay. And then you want to know who's online. Who, who's who's all here? Yeah. Okay, we have uh, Rebecca's on. Okay. Uh, wine with us. We've got Sean Kaler with us, and we have uh, let's see, Dave Cook uh, is on, uh, Matt Bauer is online with us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyway, um, discussion on the uh, uh, possible reorganizing of D-Line Park into three separate parks, which would be the would be the D-Land Park, D-Land Home Park, and uh, Sheboygan Peace Park. And I'll turn that over to Joe. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, as we're gonna be talking about later, um, is uh, the possibilities of the Sheboygan Beer Garden um, being moved to D-Land Home. Um, as part of those possibilities, um, we're looking ahead at, at um, different items. Basically, whatever we did for approving the beer garden in Qantas Park, we, we have to do again. So we're starting from scratch, basically starting over. Nice thing is we have a, an agreement in place, um, uh, so, but we're gonna have to have a new agreement also. So it, it's tonight really this commission needs to give input on um, do they feel um, that the land home would be a good use of park space for something like this? Um, and that'll be talked about later, just like we did for Kiwanis Park. Uh, this agenda item came about because if we do move forward in the future, which like um, Chair uh, Fro stated, and, and, and to his list, it also needs to go be, before the uh, Department of Public Works. So the Department of Public Works, the Plan Commission with a conditional use um, permit, and the City Council needs to go through all those steps. So tonight is really a, a good inf inf information for, for anyone. Um, but to go through that process, there are several things that need to be done, and we can cover that uh, with that agenda item. Um, one of those things is, is um, reorganizing the land park. Now the land park, even, even though um, the land home did not come to be, um, did not come into the city along with the land park, it was, it was put together just like the Sheboygan Peace Park and, and that is also on this agenda item. So 
th those two sections were were never given to the city or came into the city with the land home. They were came in separately. So the land, the land with the the, uh, the land park, the land home came in totally separate all by itself. Um, Sheboygan Peace Park, the same. Um, basically, all we're trying to do is reorganize a little bit. So, so if we do move forward um, um, doing this or something similar, if we want to change an ordinance per, for, for the land home area, if we want to change an ordinance for the Peace Park area, they, they, they are separated from the land park. So you don't have to make an ordinance change for all of the land park. You can make an ordinance change for the Sheboygan Peace Park. You can make an ordinance change for the land home area. So th that is what's being asked tonight. And um, basically in the, in the your agenda, um, just our sh maps showing um, the land home, the area in red that would be that would be considered um, an area that would be the land home park. This is a separate item. No. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. If I, if, if I may, I mean, I think what would be best for the commission is this item just be held because much of this type of uh, discussion is all predicated on if the beer garden is considered um, favorable or not favorable, then much of this reorganization of the park may not have to be so uh, Complicated. There is one portion of the Peace Park that I think we've, as the commission, is very uh, near and dear to the commission's heart, and there's been quite a bit of master planning and, and work going there. So that that will still be moving forward, but I think it would maybe be best to first reverse the order of the agenda, have the presentation first so you can get more background from Mr. Powers and his beer garden for, uh, presentation and uh, get more information for that. Again, this will all be held until further information from the neighborhood and other input from other committees are, are gathered before a final decision. But I think in order of the agenda, this, this item should be probably held. It's a good suggestion. Do we need a motion to move that around? Yes, but I was just... Okay, uh, if I can just speak to that, I actually think that I like the order in which it is listed on the agenda because while someone might not vote in necessarily in favor at this moment of a beer garden, just from a, a, from a structure and operational basis, having the Peace Park separated from the land east of Broughton Drive and separated from the land west of Broughton Drive, it, it, they're very different uses. And from an administration standpoint, I, I think it just enables uh, uh, it enables the Department of Public Works really to more properly operate three different, very distinct parks that have come into the city differently and for different uses and have different administration agreements. So, um, so, Mr. Mr. Bible, is that okay if, if we look at maintaining this, Dave? Is that and, and that would be fine. The, 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 the third, the third for component, different reasons. Right. The third component would be the D-Land home area, and that may or may not necessarily have to be changed at all. So it, that at some point may have to be amended if it's just taking in consideration the, the Peace Park and the D-Land Park to be separated. The D land home section could remain as is if if it remains as is, and a beer garden isn't considered there in the future. I I, I just was actually thinking because it's west of Broughton Drive, it actually has a very distinct use, it, it, much more in the neighborhood than the rest of the land. And, park. and 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 that's correct as well. So I mean I mean it, you we could separate it as its own separate parcel. We, it's it it is somewhat maintained that way. Okay, so before we get too far out of hand, then um, I would like to make a motion uh, 
to, and, ag and again, for purposes of this motion, I'm not commenting at all about the use of the different aspects of it, but I would like to make a motion um, to recommend uh, supporting the reorganization of DeLand Park into three separate parks, DeLand Park, DeLand Home Park, and Sheboygan Peace Park. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion on the motion. <clears throat> Can I, I chime in? This is Rebecca. Sure. Sorry, I have a delay, so I feel like I need to jump in. Uh, Joe or someone, could you give me an, ex an example of an ordinance that either the Peace Park or um, Bee Land House might want in a separate fashion? What, I'm new to the boards or to the commission, just trying to figure out some examples. I guess I, I can give you one I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, possibly in the future. I know that there's, you know, there's ordinances about like pets and things like that. If we, if, if say we, um, uh, if you want, maybe we may allow, you know, dogs in a certain one part, but not maybe would, maybe wouldn't, wouldn't want them in another part of it. Uh, that's just one thought of, you know, things. Um, uh, I guess that would be the, the one I can think of off the top of my head. I don't know if there's other things you could think of, Joe, or? Well, for the uh, for Kiwanis Park, what we needed to do was two ordinances. And again, this was specifically for the beer garden, and they're just examples. Um, one would be the, the approval of pets on a leash. Um, it's uh, the beer garden wanted to be very family friendly, friendly, um, and wanted to allow pets um, with their the family. So that was one ordinance change. The second one was glass containers. Uh, the beer garden there used um, glass containers, and that also needed to be a, um, a, an ordinance change to allow that. So those are two examples. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I know the the Sheboygan um, Peace Park people have talked about separate things over the years um, um, when they were really getting into it, and I, I think for some celebrations and things that they would like to do, it would actually probably help them also. Yeah, the Peace Park, I think, hosted some weddings and uh, things of that nature, so. Some, yeah, smaller type events yeah, that. Smaller, right, yep. but I think that was part of it. Any other comments or discussion on the motion? Otherwise, I will call the question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Signify aye. by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair also votes aye. That motion does carry, and it's a recommendation from this commission. Okay, moving on to uh, item 3.2. Uh, this is the uh, discussion on the possibility of considering the beer garden, and we have Mr. Powers uh, is going to do a presentation uh, for this commission and our guest tonight. Ah, here we go. This is this one. Okay. Can everyone hear? All right, thank you. Um, first of all, just to kind of address some of the, the comments that were made, um, we this is the very, very beginning of the process. The very first thing, in fact, we've done is to send that letter to everybody. So you're not at the end of the process. You're not um, being told late in the game about it. You're being told at the very, very beginning. Um, and I actually see tonight as an opportunity to kind of get feedback from everyone. You know, um, the, the, the beer garden is, is really, I, if any of you were at Kiwanis Park and went to the beer garden there, I think you'd see that it's, it's not a bar. It's, it's not, people aren't drinking into the wee hours of the morning. They're not getting hammered on high alcohol. They're not, you know, urinating in people's bushes and throwing up. In fact, if you talk to Captain Vieser from the Sheboygan Police Department, 
you'll find out that the number of instances where he had to come to resolve things during our operations and when we were open was zero. There's not been one instance where the police department had to be called. The, the people there that go, the clientele are like families, people with dogs, young couples, like it's, it's just a, a relaxing place to kind of have a conversation and just kind of relax. And, and the reason I like the location so much is because of the beautiful views. I mean, what better place than to just sit and relax maybe after walking your dog and just take in the views of Lake Michigan. There's no obligation to buy anything. Um, and you know, there's, and for those who don't want to drink beer but want something to drink, there's not, there's soft drinks, there's water. It, it's, it's, you know, it's got short hours. It's only open in the summer. There's, there's no loud music. It's not open late in, in, into the wee hours of the morning. It doesn't serve hard alcohol. It's, it's in no way like any bar you're going to find in Sheboygan or anywhere else in America for that matter. It's really a place for conversation. Um, so with, with that little preamble, um, let me get into kind of what, what's being proposed here. So I guess the first question on everybody's minds, it would be, well, why do you have to relocate in the first place? Just stay where you're at. Um, so the challenge is, is that the location is actually a beautiful location. And as you can maybe see in the, the picture all the way to the left, when everything's working great, it's great. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful spot, uh, views of the Sheboygan River. Um, unfortunately, the Sheboygan River is kind of an unruly river, particularly in the last few years. Um, in, in fact, in 2019, when, when those pictures were taken, the middle picture was taken, uh, we, were, we were flooded out or partially flooded out around 50% of the time. Um, and in 2020, it got worse. So the good, the bad, and the ugly, it's, it's true. In, in late spring of 2020, you can see what the Sheboygan Beer Garden looked like. And right now it's covered in snow, but if you go over there right now, you'll see that that water that was there in May of 2020, thankfully, has receded. Unfortunately, it left behind a giant thick layer of mud everywhere. It, it's, uh, it's a mess. The, the whole site is a complete mess. And that's the reason why we're looking at alternatives because eventually nature will take it back and things will grow and it'll look beautiful again, but it could take years. So that's the reason for looking at other locations. So what are we, what, what are, what, what's, what's Dealin Park what, or Dealin Home? Well, you know, what is it used for currently? Um, as you can see, you guys, everybody here, I think, has either been there or knows the site pretty well. Um, you know, it's, it's a building with about 880 square feet, uh, has two bathrooms in it and, and a big open space uh, for tables. And it, even though on here it says it's rented a few times a year, according to Joe, I understand it's been rented about 40 times, is that right? Uh, 41 times in 2019 it was rented. Okay. It's, it's, it's 2020 would not be fair, a fair amount. Uh, 37 the year before, 27 20 the, in 2017. So the, the rental's been going up at uh, 41 in 2019. Okay. So it's more than a few times a year. It's actually rented, uh, you know, 40 times a year. Probably most of that's in the summer, I would guess, because it's not heated and they turn the water off as they do with all the parks in, in mid-October. So it's probably rented, you know, on average two and a half times per weekend during the summer. Um, what's the proposed oper operation? So it's, it's a beer garden. Uh, you'll see the tables there are very narrow. They're, they're actually imported from Germany and they're actually designed for conversation. You know, the idea isn't to be spread out and really far away from each other, even though probably that would be good right now with COVID, but the idea behind those beer garden tables being so narrow is so that people can talk. And that's really what a beer garden's about. It's about conversation. The beer is secondary. 
It absolutely is. Um, you know, besides beer, you know, what else do we serve? Well, we serve a, a modest amount of food as well. You can get giant pretzels, no surprise for a beer garden. Uh, we'll have pizza, cheese curds, but mostly just like beer gardens you would have in Europe, people are very welcome to bring their own picnic baskets and just turn it into like a family picnic. Um, and that's, that's really the way beer gardens are designed and that's kind of the, the, the way I see it as well. Um, now dogs are not allowed in the park, but it, I can tell you from Kiwanis Park, dogs were really popular <laughs> in Kiwanis Park. Uh, people would walk their dogs and stop by meet up with friends, maybe have a beer, maybe not, and be on their way. Um, and that's something that I think would be a nice little add um, for people in the neighborhood to be able to walk their dog, sit down, take a break, look at Lake Michigan, go home. Um, and just to reiterate the point, that second to the last bullet point, it's seasonal in nature, it's not year round. You know, it's not loud music, in fact, quite honestly, um, the, the music that we played, which was over a loudspeaker most of the time, um, was so quiet that most people didn't know it was on. And, and I would have no issue whatsoever of just saying no music. It's not, it's not an important element. The conversation is the important element of a beer garden. So um, music, not important. Um, hard alcohol. It's something that, first of all, you wouldn't find in most beer gardens because it's really about you know, low, low alcohol products. But in, uh, personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it because it's not, my clientele are families. My clientele are, you know, couples, people walking their dog. That's, that's my clientele. It's not guys that want to get trashed. And quite frankly, if they want to do that, I think there's a, a million bars around here they can go to for a fraction of what it costs them to buy a beer in my beer garden if they want to get drunk. Um, my my, my, my uh, prices are not cheap, I'll tell you that. $7 for a beer. Um, so, uh, and, and hours, you know, the proposal, by the way, I'm not sure where the person who, who wrote that letter that everybody received said six days a week. That's not true, that's not what I submitted. I actually submitted five days a week. Um, and, and quite frankly, if, if the issue is over hours or number of days, we'll dial it back. I don't have to be open even five days a week. Uh, you know, if four is, is more comfortable, I'll do that. If the hours are too long, because I was proposing, what I was proposing is, well, we'll get to it, I guess, in a minute, but I was proposing Wednesday and Thursday from four to nine and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from noon to nine. That's what I was proposing. If those hours are not, and again, I want feedback from everybody in the community. That's the reason for the letter. That's the reason why we're gonna have a neighbor, neighborhood meeting coming up shortly, because I, I wanna hear from people to see what, what, is, what, what would work for the community. So those, that's what's being proposed. If it has to be dialed back on hours and number of days, I'm wide open, wide open to hearing what the neighbor, I want to be a good neighbor, you know. Um, next up, so can, uh, justification for it, you know, so, some of the things I've talked about already, social gathering place, beautiful location to relax. It, one of the nice things about a beer garden is there's no cost to go, to go there. There's no, you know, you can just sit down with a group and have a meeting if you wanted to. If, if all of you wanted to have one of your meetings there, you can just go over, sit down at a chair, and no one will bother you. You can be there all day if you want. Um, so it's a, it's a free indoor or outdoor space for people to utilize for, for gathering. It helps to, you know, cover a lot of costs for the upkeep of these facilities. It's been a significant investment in Kiwanis Park and there'd be another significant investment on my part, by the way, um, in, in the land home as well. So there's, there's investment, there's continually upkeep, maintenance, cleanup. So I don't know, somebody here mentioned something about 4th of July and there was a garbage. 
well, that, that would stop because I'm in charge of making sure the grounds are maintained at all times. So um, that's also a benefit. Um, you know, then there's just the whole idea of just bringing a new experience to Sheboygan. You know, um, beer gardens are, are really popular in Milwaukee and I see no reason why they wouldn't be equally popular here. Um, maybe more so actually here. So I, I th and, and who knows? I mean, it could even become a tourist draw. With that view of Lake Michigan, um, you know, it could be something that, you know, makes people sp spend a little more time in Sheboygan and spend a little more money in Sheboygan. Um, so, so this just gives you, uh, I, I wanted to show this because this is just pulled off of Facebook and you guys can jump on the Facebook page and check it out too. But the, the, ra the rating, as you can see, is almost perfect. Okay, uh, 4.9 out of five, almost everybody gives it a five. And I, take a look at the wording from some of these people. A good conversation. Um, I, I was, er, er, Charles Henning says, it was great to take out dinner here and have a beer, kind of like a picnic, exactly. Uh, Karen Vodder says, love the atmosphere and how easy and laid back everything is. Usually bring my four-year-old in a card game. These are, these are my customers, these are my clients. This isn't bar people. These aren't people getting hammered. These are families. Um, you know, it's all about conversation. Mark Aschenbach, good beer, fun atmosphere, quiet place to talk and hang out. That's what it's all about. It's about relaxed conversation. Um, so site improvements, I, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but there's a lot of work that has to be done. Um, both just in getting the property up to, uh, you know, uh, functional use um, in the bathrooms uh, on, the, on some of the walls, also getting it set up so that you could actually sell product out of that space. Right now, it's really just a big room. There's two bathrooms and a big space, so there, there'd be some renovation work needed there to fix that space to make to be able to utilize it. Now, this is just a this is a just a, a wild idea of like how many tables could actually fit on the space. It's not so much how many tables are actually going to be there, okay? It's, it's kind of more, let's see how many tables you could fit in the space that, that is there. And as you can see, you know, there's a, there's a total of around, uh, I don't know, I didn't add this up, but what do we have here? 20, 24 and 21, so 45. 45 tables is probably what could fit in that space. How many would we really put in that space? For sure to start with a whole lot less than that. You know, I'm suggesting around 21 to start with. Um, and and it, can, it can handle 21, but maybe we even start a little smaller. I don't know, maybe 15. Um, you need, especially with COVID, you do need to spread the tables out, you know. So maybe you really only get 15 in that space. But uh, this is just some idea of, of thoughts here. These are thought starters more than definitive layouts. Um, then the scope of work, I won't get into all the details here. This is, uh, you know, more for the people from the city, but there's some gonna be some pretty significant carpentry work that has to be done there. Clearly painting as well. Uh, some Some, we gotta rip up some floors as well for plumbing, as well as updating some electric. So there's, there's, uh, there's some investment that needs to be made and, and I'm prepared to do it. And so the operational details, this is what, uh, when I submitted to the city recently, this is what I put in here. So um, proposed, proposed opening is May 29th, which is the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend and then it would run through October 3rd, which is the first Sunday in October. Um, and again, these are proposals. I do want feedback from the, from the neighborhood. So if the neighbors want that dialed back, um, I'm, I'm open. I, I wanna hear what everyone has to say. Um, likewise, on the hours of operation, as you can see here, this is what I propose to the city. Um, 
if, if people have other thoughts, again, I'm open to it. Um, the, the, and then just the idea of how things would work there. Um, what I had proposed is last call at nine. Maybe again, it's, it's earlier, that's fine with me. Uh, music, sounds like maybe people don't want music. I'm fine with that, no music. Um, garbage pickup, we'll have, you know, they'll, we'll have some dumps, dumpsters. We'll obviously have to hide those dumpsters, you know, uh, behind some fencing or some other way to camouflage them so that they're not visible. So, but we'll need that obviously to be able to haul off the garbage so that we don't have garbage floating around like on 4th of July. Um, underage drinking, first of all, the, the customer base is just not, it's not a big concern. We don't, there aren't a whole lot of 21 year olds looking to spend $7 for a beer, mm -hmm. truth be told. But we card people, anybody that looks, you know, remotely like that, we card them. So um, we're very aggressive about that. And um, other than that, I think that one of the issues that was raised is around parking. And it's true, there is no parking there. So street parking is, is probably the situation. Um, one of the things that I didn't talk about in here, but was brought up in that letter that was sent out, was around um, food trucks. And I don't, I don't have an answer to the food truck question. I don't know what kind of limits the city can put on food trucks parking in that area. But I'm very open to having limitations or complete elimination of that. If, if you know, if, if that's the, the issue. Um, so I think that's kind of the it. This is just some signage. Um, again, signage is also like music. If you don't want signage, I won't have signage. I don't need it, quite honestly. Um, and then lastly is just kind of a summary of, of all the things we've already talked about. So that's, that's, my, that's what I submitted to the city. Uh, if you have any questions, fire away. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, we'll open it up to any commissioners that might have some questions of John regarding this proposal. Anyone? Joe? If I could, I'd just like to add to it. Um, my name is Joe Curlin. I'm a superintendent of Parks and Forestry for the city of Sheboygan. Um, I was one of the people that worked with John um, through the whole process of, of getting it approved at Kiwanis Park. And I want to um, commend John on 2019 and what he did there. And he's absolutely correct. I did not hear of any uh, problems in the park because of um, the beer garden. Did not hear of any place call, call outs there. So um, I visited it several times uh, with my dog and every, it was a very calm, relaxing atmosphere where like John said, you could have a conversation. Um, we promoted this for approval um, as actually at meeting one of our mission statements um, and socialize, um, for people to come together and socialize in our park. And, and it absolutely does, and it did. Um, we actually presented this idea um, after what happened um, through 2019 and 2020 to John. So I'm one of the people that presented this idea to John um, to, to look at it. Uh, we're, we're, and, and like you said too, it's the starting of a process. We're not in the middle, we're not close to the end, we're starting. Uh, we have every hopes um, reached out to um, the chair of both, um, both neighborhoods that border uh, that area in hopes that we can set up a, uh, a meeting with both neighborhoods to answer any questions, to, to go out and meet the neighbors there. Um, but um, 2019 went very well. Uh, we presented this because of the conditions of the park. Um, we see this um, as a better use of, of space than what we're currently doing now. Uh, 41, um, um, 41 rentals in 2019, um, great for, for families, gatherings, things like that. But I would, I would also say that there's probably a lot more control um, with having someone run a beer garden like John in that area um, than there is at this time. Um, 
and 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 it's going to be open to more people to enjoy. Uh, I, I think most people have been up there. They've seen the views. Um, I think it's a great use of space for the public. So that's that's why what was presented to John, and and that's why we're going through this process. So um, I'm I'm hoping. Tonight, again, this is uh, Marina Parks and Forestry Board, an advisory committee. We only meet three, four times a year. I'm hoping that maybe we can at least think, okay, this use of space would be a, a good for the park, um, allow it to move along, and then it still needs to go through the Department of Public Works and the Plan Commission and the Council. Thank you, Joe. Peter. So a couple of questions, one for John and a couple for other people. Um, John, uh, by the way, my name is Peter Mayer. I'm the commissioner, I've been a uh, commissioner for a while and I live in the neighborhood. So I'm very familiar with the neighborhood. Um, uh, and I've attended the beer garden as well. John, there's proximity to uh, North Beach here that you really don't have that same proximity of younger people in Kiwanis Park that, that you do in, in North Beach. Have you thought about a different approach to underage drinking or underage people being around the beer garden and things that you might do intentionally to try to reduce any effort in the event that there was approval given? Yeah, so it, 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 it's a good point that it's right across the street from the beach and there's gonna be young people at the beach. So, you know, the, the idea is that there, there'll be, at least we talked about this, that there would be like a fence with rope around it, okay? And the idea is that if you enter inside that roped off area, that you have to be 21 years old or be with a, somebody that is 21 years old, okay, to cross that barrier. Um, so, that, so you would intend to have some sort of a physical barrier to make sure that, that it is, doesn't just feel like an extension of the beach. Yeah, no, no. In fact, uh, that's a really steep slope <laughs> going right. down to the, to the road from there. So yeah, you absolutely need to have a barrier <laughs> for sure. Okay. Um, and then a question for Joe. With respect to the community or members from the neighborhood, uh, is there any other opportunity for public comment in the process of going to Department of Public Works, uh, Plan Commission, and City Council? So in other words, if there are people who weren't here tonight, uh, but, but or just found out about it an hour ago, or haven't even found out about it yet, will there be other opportunities for members of the public to speak and give their opinion as neighbors? Yep, we're working on that right now. Um, I've, uh, again, I sent out emails and we've had some back and forth emails with the, the two um, chairs of both neighborhoods. Um, so we're gonna come right to them, we're hoping, or maybe it might be here, we don't know yet, and um, uh, invite all the neighbors in both areas to come and ask their questions, uh, give their feedback. Um, um, so that's, that's we're hoping to happen sooner than later, like right away, and but then, and then once, you know, there's things that need to be worked on still, um, but um, then it would go to council, if it goes this far, it would go to council to be sent to the parks and um, to send the public works and the plan commission. Okay. Um, so in both those, um, both those meetings, there's a ability for, for neighbors to come and, and voice their opinion. In fact, with the planning commission, the people that received the letters from John, 15 households received the letter from John, those are the same people that will receive a letter from the Planning Commission letting them know that this is coming to the Planning Commission. Okay, so they're gonna receive specific notice and an opportunity to publicly speak at a Planning Commission. Correct, okay. right. So those same 15 people will have the ability to go to the Planning Commission and, and also speak, so. Um, then if it, it, if, if it does get approved by both those areas, then it would go to the city council for a final approval. 
And again, there's an opportunity for them to speak at the city council. Meeting. Yes, yes, just like tonight beforehand. Okay, so, okay, thank you for the clarification. And then, Dave, I'm sorry, uh, a question for you, um, and this is really kind of from a regulatory and control standpoint. One of the big issues that I'm hearing is about parking. And again, I'm, I live in the neighborhood, I'm very familiar with the neighborhood and I know that there's some challenges to restricting food trucks or anybody else on the public street that, where you can park. Is it possible uh, for public works to create something in that surrounding area, not, not in Broad Drive, but I mean those uh, streets, uh, Erie, Forth, in, in just that area to have no parking? Uh, there, um, and again, assuming that the neighbors want no parking, I know Erie, it would be, you know, really unusual for the neighbors on the Erie side to want parking anyhow. I think they all have driveways and forth, I'm not sure. And, and you know, but just the surrounding area, is that something that the neighbors can consider as a possibility of a restriction to make sure that they're not having visitors parking? So make people uh, exercise a little bit and walk up the hill? Uh, instead, sure. There, there's, there's, there are the ability to uh, have some parking restrictions, especially uh, what would be like a commuter impacted area in front of their homes. Now, on the park proper side, it would be difficult to impose parking restrictions on that side of the street. But on which, on which side? On, on, on the park side, uh, for instance, if. Erie Avenue, the cul-de-sac at the end of Erie. Oh, I see what you're What's, What would be at the north side of Erie Avenue, which would be along there. It would be difficult because it is a public street to re in, in have restrictions in terms of public parking. We could, there could be time limits. There could be two hour parking so much, but it's as, as simple, just no parking whatsoever. Um, it would be easier to do something on the side where the homes are in front of the homes where if there's the, they have impacted parking for, for instance, if there's uh, increased traffic and it's difficulty for them to park in their home and they don't have off street parking, for instance, then that, then we do have uh, ordinances that allow for those those types of impacts. Um, you know, part part. You know, I think John has has mentioned this, and I think it's been his experience too. A lot a lot of his patrons will will bike, jog. Right. walk it's it's not a it's not a let's all drive destination is what at least what we've experienced at Kiwanis uh, nevertheless um, you know the park does have it does have some what I would say drop off area within the park I know when the park is rented there is a driveway it's it's grass and people will park on the grass uh, it's something that we probably don't want to encourage Right, uh, because we just do, we we want to encourage green space, so we wouldn't want to uh, encourage you know off street parking by building a parking lot within the park. Right. Uh, we're not we're not advocating that. We want to keep it as green as possible. Again, um, you know, if parking is is an issue, clearly that is something that then can be addressed as as I mentioned with through the ordinance. Thank you so much, Dave. And then. Uh, um, one last question. I'm sorry, I don't mean to monopolize this, but um, and I don't know if this is a, a better question for 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 Joe or you, Dave. Um, so, if the if the Deland home was used 41 times, was there any review to determine if alcohol was consumed during those times, and if so, was it proper? Um, any review by the city over the past couple of years? Of alcohol consumption, uh, at the alcohol is allowed. Uh, we don't. It, it's we don't track it. Uh, but most of the events, uh, you know, I'd have to. We'd have to really dig into that. And, and, and again, we have some time, and we could get further detail in terms of what type. If was it at, was it a family reunion? Was it um, a wedding? We, we we can dig through some of that data. Again, it's we don't ask if there's alcohol served or not when it's a private function. If it's public, yes. Then we then we do know if there's there's a and again that's any alcohol not just beer right correct yes for for a private function they can have uh, anything that they want to bring okay Th thank you for for answering those questions thank you Peter commissioners anyone else you got thirty seven questions 
Dan? Statements, I guess. Um, um, I guess want to say, uh, for one thing, I'm, I'm sad that it's leaving Kiwanis Park, but I, I understand Mr. Powers' position and what's happening there, because I, I really thought it was a lovely venue when you did have it open and when it was working, it was, it, when it, when it worked, it worked. <laughs> when, but I understand why, why you're moving it. it it's, uh, it is in my district, actually, the Kiwanis Park is, and uh, uh, I, I never received one single phone call, email, or anything of a complaint about the, 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 the area. Uh, I, I do realize it's a little bit further away from home, but it still was, uh, there's a few homes across the river, never got a complaint, never got a, and I, I, ha I did hear a lot of positive feedback on it. So that is a positive, and I'm just I'm not trying to you know, paint over what you have, your, your concerns are either uh, from, from the citizens, but uh, I, I will say that those are the, the things that I would say, that, uh, and I, I myself personally was there, and you're right, it is a social, quiet area. So. Any additional comments? Uh, Mr. Chair? Go ahead. This is Rebecca again, sorry. Um, can I just ask, uh, I don't know if it's Joe or Mr. Powers, were any other parks considered as a, as a replacement? I too am sorry to see it leave Kiwanis. I did like the park feel there, and this does feel a lot more residential. Were any other parks considered? Yeah, so, well, I can, I can take it or you can, Joe. John, if you wanna go first, that's fine. Um, yeah, so, I actually spent a, a, a rainy Sunday <laughs> with the mayor um, looking at er, literally every park in, in Sheboygan. Um, the challenge is, is really that, you know, it's either, um, it, there's, there's challenges either because in, in most cases they don't have the, the uh, infrastructure, like they don't have bathrooms, for instance. They might have a covered you know, an open but covered area, but there aren't any bathrooms nearby. So then you have to build a bathroom building, um, you know, or maybe they have some bathroom buildings, but they don't have any anywhere else, you know, and the ground is really unlevel. And so, I mean, we did look at the, at every other possible location. And, you know, other than Kiwanis Park, when it's not completely flooded out, this, it, this is the one area where you know, it has bathrooms, it has a building, it actually has a, 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 a building in place that actually we can work with um, and, and just, you know, renovate it, what's already there, as opposed to building something from scratch. So I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Joe. R really nothing much to add. Um, I know picking Kiwanis Park in the first place was, was you know, uh, John went through all the parks back then too, looking at all of them. Um, Kiwanis Park was a, a great spot to look at and to do what we did. Um, the, really the only other option that we could come with, we kept coming back to DeLand Home. Just another quick question. Again, I'm new to the commission, so I'm trying to figure out uh, our role in the food chain here. Uh, is it is it typical to not do the neighborhood meeting first and then do the plan commission because it would have been nice to see citizen comments kind of side by side with the proposal or is this the usual way of doing it? So uh, I think that it would have been great to no I you know I think this is a good way to do it because I think the Marina Parks and Forestry Committee being an advisory committee really needs to know what's going on first, you know? And, and what if what if we'd come here tonight and, oh, that's just a horrible use of park. We don't even wanna go there. Well, then what's the use of going any further? Um, what I would throw out that, you know, the next step really is now meeting with the neighbors. That's, that's the next step before uh, really going to any other committees. If this committee felt, hey, you know what? I gotta, no, we need to wait. Uh, we wanna see how the neighbors are doing. That's fine too. Um, we could bring back more information. But if this committee really feels strongly that it could be a good use of park and knowing that we have to go through such a process anyways, we're looking for that support. 
Um, so really, Marina Parks and Forestry needs to be on board with something before you, you go too far. Can, can, I, uh, can I just comment on that, uh, Rebecca, specifically to answer your question? Um, I've been an advocate of having uh, matters relating to park control come before our commission first, before neighbors. Um, I think it's vital that we protect the parks. Uh, first and foremost, there's a lot of additional process, and we have had a couple of occasions in past history where it came to us after it had already gone to a number of stakeholders, and I was actually a little surprised and concerned that we didn't know about it earlier on in the process. It's our job to protect the parks. Um, there are other processes in which uh, the neighborhood's interests are looked out for. Um, I don't think that's exactly our mission. So again, I appreciate, Joe, you bringing this up uh, in this process. I think it is the correct process which should be used in all, in, uh, like this night, in all future occasions as well. Thanks for that, that clarification. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, John, I just want to thank you. Uh, I know you made quite an investment in uh, Kiwanis Park, and uh, and again, that that looked like the ideal uh, situation until the river and the lake levels, and uh, you know that you're willing to uh, to make another investment in in Sheboygan. I uh, personally, I see this as a real enhancement to. Uh, our magnificent lakeshore area and Dinland Park that we have along there. It's, uh, it's a great addition and for our citizens, our visitors alike, uh, and you know, people in the, the, the boaters that come to our marina. Uh, we continue to get very, very high grades for our community of uh, our visiting boaters and having it in that location makes it a little more accessible to them as well. So. And they'll, they'll be walking. They won't be bringing yeah. their boat that far. No so. doubt. Um, um, I, I do want to say a big thank you for giving me the time to kind of talk about the, the vision here. And, and also, I want to say to the people that came from the neighborhood, I, I do truly, truly look forward to meeting with all of you and, and taking into account your, your comments, your thoughts, your concerns, and trying to craft something that can work for everybody. I really mean it. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional I'd like to make comments? a motion. Uh, okay, Peter. Uh, I'd like to move that uh, we recommend supporting an agreement to allow the beer garden to be held at the land home instead of Kiwanis Park, uh, along with consideration of additional requirements uh, to address concerns with proximity to neighbors uh, uh, from a planning standpoint uh, in the remainder of the process. So again, the, in the, again is the intent is to recommend supporting the agreement, but then in the remaining process to uh, consider additional requirements to address concerns with proximity to the neighbors. Do we have a second to that motion? Uh, I'll second. Thank you, Dean. Um, any discussion on the motion? Dean. Uh, I guess I just want to make this comment. I, I agree with Joel on this. I, I think that this is just the first step, and I, I, not that the neighbors get upset about this, but I think we, we, I think it's important that they're in part of this process and that their, their voice is heard on this. And this is, like you said, this is step one of many steps and that this isn't a done deal, that this is just where it gets, gets to so that you can hear more of this and we can hear more of your comments. Uh, so this moves forward on this and that's why I'll be supporting it. Any other discussion on the motion? If not, I will call the uh, question. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries. Thank you. Who's the who pulled out? Rebecca. That was Rebecca. Was it? Okay. No. Okay. Uh, reports. Item four. 
Matt, are you still with us uh, for the Marina report? I am, yes. <laughs> Hi, Matt. So it's good evening. Um, uh, it's been a while since we last talked here. So um, looking at the, going to the Marina report then, um, seasonal slips, um, we're about on par uh, count-wise from last year, but I think the uh, interesting thing to note is here, um, we're very much ahead in some of the bigger size slips. Um, which has definitely had a big impact on, on revenue as well. Uh, I think what we saw a lot of last year was um, voters that had smaller boats um, starting to upgrade uh, by bigger boats. Um, so we saw a lot of voters that had smaller slips, um, need bigger slips, which is great to, a great trend to see now in the industry again. Um, and um, that's uh, one of the reasons, too, that why the 30-foot slips, which are generally usually sold out first, are... Uh, lagging a little behind this year, but um, all in all, um, seasonal slips are on track. Um, the 2020 seasonal slips or, or tenant surveys are also attached to the reports. Um, just to kind of highlight, there's a lot of information there. Um, certainly feel free to ask questions, but um, again, reporting a very high satisfaction rate from the seasonal slip customers, 96% um, being overall satisfied with their experience this season, 100% uh, of those being um, satisfied with upkeep of the building and grounds, and then the management and office staff. So, uh, a couple, we always try to find a couple of key takeaways to take back and work on on the off season to improve the experience next season. Um, some of the things we took away from the surveys this year, um, continuing to look for and source options for expanded um, off-season storage and service in Sheboygan. Um, continuing to tweak the Wi-Fi um, to give you a better experience for boaters. We installed a new system two years ago now. Um, Wi-Fi in a marine environment is uh, a challenge, so we're continuing to make adjustments to that to um, give the best possible experience. Uh, adding gate closers to our dock gates as well is another key takeaway then too. Um, then for the marketing and sales end, kind of talked about the, um, the increase in the bigger size slips already um, and how that impacted the smaller size slips. Uh, currently, Ryder Cup reservations, we do have um, a few already. Um, since I wrote this report, I think we're now up to 16 instead of the 11. Um, we had definitely had more the last year, but um, we're still expecting a, a great turnout, and it is during what I would definitely consider our shoulder season where we don't see a lot of activity anyways. Um, so it should definitely will definitely help our transit revenue for, for this year. Um, we've increased some of the uh, ship store hours this last off-season as well. We've kept um, a minimal amount of weekend hours going into the off-season. Uh, which has led to some more additional sales in the month of December. Um, this helped push the store uh, 22,000 over its um, budget for 2020 um, while increasing our profit margins. So we were really excited to see the, the store continuing to grow and um, gain traction with the public and as well as offering um, goods that voters are looking for. <laughs> um, in addition, that we're also working on the marina's website. We're working on an overhaul for that, um, easier flow, better connection to social media. I'm looking to have that launch at the end of the month, so we're excited to, to unveil that. Um, maintenance, uh, these are the big topic this time of year. Uh, so far, we've been very fortunate to have a very mild winter. Temperatures have been uh, I would consider decent. For the most part, the marina has been fairly icy, ice free due to our de icing efforts and the mild winter. Um, so far, um, a couple, one or two welding breaks, um, so nothing, nothing concerning yet. Uh, what I would consider well below average, um, you know, maintenance that will need to be done in springtime then. Um, so our plan is hopefully if we can maintain, we got some cooler temperatures coming up in the forecast here, so we're, we're certainly not out of the woods yet. Um, but we're looking to hopefully uh, use the savings that were budgeted for dock damage to continue to reskin some of the unstable slips here in the marina uh, to continue to make those safer for our tenants. Um, water levels too, 
I think we've noted that uh, they have certainly dropped quite a bit over the winter already, uh, which has certainly helped with running uh, ice damage this winter as well. Uh, will also make things a lot easier to maintain come the boating season as well. I think right around now it's about a foot and three inches that we're down from where we were at last season. Um, some very exciting updates too with the, the bar operation. Uh, we're about a month away from who we're intending to open the bar at this point. Um, renovations have all been completed and uh, we're in the process of interviewing and talking to some uh, additional staff to um, staff the bar area as well. Uh, we're hoping to launch a little bit of a soft opening for the boaters to give them a little sneak preview in mid-March and then opening for regular hours towards the end of March, early April to kind of coincide with the, the start of the marina season as well. Um, lastly, again, it was uh, very pleased to report that uh, for the now the third year in a row, uh, we successfully won the Elite Fleet Award from marinas.com. Uh, for those of you that know, aren't familiar with the award there, it is marinas.com is a review site very similar to TripAdvisor for the marine industry. Uh, it's nothing that uh, is paid for or anything like that. It's strictly just one through um, customer feedback and reviews. Uh, to get it, we have to maintain an average review rating of 4.8 or higher out of 5 and receive at least 10 reviews in the uh, the year that we went. So uh, we were one of the inaugural marinas to win it um, back in 2018, and now this will be our, our third year of, of winning that award. Um, so that covers the marina report. We'll open it up to any questions that anyone has. Commission members, questions for Matt? Peter? Just a, just a quick comment. Uh, nope. Matt. Hang on a second. Yeah. <laughs> turned on. I keep turning myself off. I'm okay. sorry. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Matt, just a quick comment. Congratulations on a nice variance uh, in year-to-date income. That really looks good. Um, obviously, if anybody wants to focus at the little boat numbers, they're looking at the wrong number. I'm looking at the bottom line, $50,000 year-to-date variance compared to last year, outstanding. So uh, congratulations on that. That was nice to see. Thank you. Any other comments? Matt, just a couple of things. Also, congratulations to you and Michaela. Um, excellent job considering the challenges that you were facing this season. Um, you, you did a Thank great you. job in, in continuing to, uh, to get the Elite Fleet Award. A um, couple of things. The survey only had a 13% response uh, uh, rate, and uh, we really have to uh, work at trying to, you know, 13%, it's hard, hard to, uh, to really get a feel for, uh, for what our slip holders are really concerned about. So uh, just a consideration perhaps of revamping that survey, maybe, maybe just start out with the ultimate question about referring a, a friend to the uh, marina and then maybe going into a little more in depth from there. Or, uh, or trying to uh, call our slip holders and do, uh, do the survey over the phone but I really encourage you to try to uh, increase that, that percentage. Um, sure, that, just, uh, just for comparison, 15% is about the average that most F3 marinas see on their um, seasonal surveys. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then could you give us any update on um, storage and uh, additional service uh, possibilities? I know it's something we've talked about for several years now. Um, is there anything you can share with us? Um, nothing um, definite at this time. Uh, we have been in talks with a couple of uh, developers that are working with the Oscar site on the south side of Sheboygan. Um, but uh, nothing definitive to share yet, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone else have any? Anything else? If not, thanks, Matt. We will move on to uh, our Maywood report. If Dave is still with us.
There we go. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks for having me here. Just wanted to let you know that I'm really pleased to share with you that uh, 41 years ago, a master site plan was created for Maywood, and we've been relying on that master site plan all of these years until just recently. Uh, we just completed a new master site plan for Maywood, and that will be uh, our foundation going forward from, from this point on. In that original master site plan, though, there were three objectives that uh, we focused on, and one was recreation, uh, preservation, and education were those three objectives, and I just wanted to mention what's going on at the present time in those three areas. Right now with recreation, with the great snow that we have, there's tons of cross-country skiers and snowshoers out here on a daily basis. We've got volunteers grooming our ski trails, and we've created some new trails for snowshoers just so that they aren't uh, going and walking on the, uh, the ski trails. We've had a lot of hikers here this fall when, when we didn't have snow, and we've enhanced our bird feeding area tremendously, so that's become very popular for birders to come out and enjoy that as well. With preservation, uh, we recently, within the last two weeks, we finished a uh, an ash tree removal project sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They were looking to utilize trees from Maywood for a research project that uh, they ended up removing about uh, 200 ash trees. Uh, those were then hauled back to their headquarters in Michigan for further study, and we're hoping to have them back possibly next year. Um, basically, it's a free service for us, and uh, there's almost an endless supply of infected ash trees here at Maywood, so we definitely need to have uh, those trees removed. We're taking out just those that would be a problem for those folks on trails, so any ash trees that are in more of the interior areas will be left as habitat. In place of those ash trees that were removed, we had uh, Stantec and uh, the Lakeshore Natural Resource Partnership was able to get a grant so we planted about 315 trees uh, this fall to, make, uh, to plant in those places where a lot of those ash trees were removed from. We're hoping to get the WISCOR group back again this year. Um, we had them around last year and uh, to do some invasive species removal. And next, uh, this coming April, we're hoping to have them back to help us with uh, more ash tree removal as well. We're going to be doing more tree planting again this spring, um, and uh, we got some real purpose for planting those trees to um, memorialize a couple of folks. Uh, many of you are familiar with Jerry Waymeyer, who passed away recently, and also uh, one of our volunteers, long-standing volunteers, June Plot. Uh, we acquired some memorial gift money for, for both of those folks, and we're hoping to use that to plant a lot of trees and shrubs to, again, enhance Maywood. To date, we've planted, since we started planting trees back in the uh, mid-1980s, we've planted approximately 30,000 trees so far. So the, the park has changed dramatically over the years from its old farmstead to now being a, uh, a habitat of rich uh, tree, shrub, and wildflower growth. And then as far as education, I wanted to, to mention that one because we have in the last couple of years really tried to widen our spectrum of educational emphasis so that we're covering everything from preschool education all the way up through seniors. And in uh, 2016, we started a program called OWLS. OWLS is an acronym. It used to stand for Older, Wiser, Livelier Seniors, but uh, those involved in OWLS uh, didn't like the senior uh, title to it, so we changed it to Older, Wiser, Livelier Scholars. And that program has been incredibly popular. Uh, we have uh, folks coming out every Friday to do outdoor learning. Um, so uh, if you're interested, if you're an adult and interested, come on out on, on Friday at 10 o'clock. We'll be outside doing some, some exploration of our landscape here at Maywood. Uh, the preschool, that started in uh, three years, we're in our third year now, and in our first couple of years, we only had seven or eight students. Right now, we are maxed out. The school district will allow us to have only 18 students, and so we're at 18. Uh, we have 18 signed up for next year, um, and we have a waiting list started. So that program has grown tremendously, and I think in part because of COVID, everybody's looking for a place to go uh, where it's safe and outdoors. And so our program for preschoolers, which is 
almost all outdoors has has proven itself to be a great way for those young kids to learn. And uh, finally, the the last item I have for you is that uh, I will be retiring on April 30th, so this will be my last report to this committee. And I want to thank you for all your support that you've provided over the years for Maywood. Thank you. Congratulations on your upcoming retirement. Well earned. Um, any thank questions? You. Any questions for Dave? Tremendous job. I mean, that is such a wonderful asset we had and uh, have and uh, continues to have. So it's great to have that new master plan uh, down, too. Okay, Parks and Forestry. I want to say congrats to Dave. <laughs> I think they're yeah. going to plant you in the ground out there, Dave. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay, Park and Forestry report. Joe, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to cover some of the uh, highlights for uh, 2020. A uh, very interesting year for everybody. Um, uh, as you know, I think I, I've stated, you know, we did a lot this work uh, this last year. Um, we, we, because of COVID and um, not allowing some of the rentals during certain times, we, we did hire a, a fraction, probably a third. Of, of what we usually do for seasonals. Um, but I just wanna give really a, a shout out to all of Public Works um, uh, for, for doing a good job, stepping up, getting work done. Uh, the Parks, Parks Department, um, um, I'm one of 16 people in the Parks Department and uh, the, the team just really stepped up last year um, with, with less of uh, you know, a seasonal staff and I'll, I'll tell you, the, the, the parks really looked good and the parks were really getting used because the, the parks department, the beach, the beach, the, the walkways, the trails gave people an out during this time. And um, the guys really stepped up, the team stepped up to make sure the garbages were getting dumped on time, to make sure things were looking clean. Um, to, to give the, the, the people a place to go and be proud of and, and just get out of the house for a while, you know. So um, again, um, I, I just wanna thank them. Um, and that goes with the whole of Public Works uh, doing their jobs, um, keeping the community uh, nice. You know, it's we, we have buildings and grounds. Um, I gotta give a shout out to them um, with the electricians. They, they installed, and if you haven't seen this yet, please drive by End Park and Fountain Park at night. Beautiful lights, beautiful new lights, 2020. Um, and you can it just, they flow together so nice. That was buildings and grounds and electrical. So uh, big shout out to them uh, with helping us with that. Um, and, and same with streets. They, they do so much for us, the things that we don't do, you know. Um, there was trail repair that needed to be done on Broughton Drive going down the hill. There was a washout. They got out there the very next day, fixed it. Uh, so things like that are constantly being done because DPW together, uh, streets, sanitation, parks, buildings and grounds uh, work together and, and we appreciate everybody's work to uh, keep this community uh, nice and uh, giving, especially giving the parks a place for the community to go to gather socialize, stay socially distanced, and get some exercise. So uh, it's been an interesting year, but a very good year for the Parks Department, and I do appreciate that. Um, we do have 36 parks, just a quick kind of annual report. I'm gonna run through this. Most of these items will be in the Department of Public Works annual report also, so that'll be coming out shortly with the, the rest of the department's annual reports. We have 36 parks, 705, 705 acres of parkland, Amongst that, um, we have six rentable pavilions, 10 rentable picnic shelters, uh, a band shell, 24 restrooms that we have to clean every day. And we had that posted, you know, restrooms are cleaned daily. Once we did open them, um, we, you know, so those are, those are my guys going out, that's our team every day going out and making sure those areas are clean. 10, ten tennis courts, three pickleball courts, and we're gonna see some pictures of that later in the report. Um, very well used, very appreciated. 
active that we, I, I think Plymouth maybe has some pickleball court courts that are just pickleball courts, but other than that, I think we're the, you know, the first in the county and it's, it's pretty neat to see them used. Um, we got six baseball, softball fields. Uh, we have Wildwood Softball Complex, Wildwood Baseball Complex, two miles of public beaches, concrete skate park, and an archery range. Um, you know, so I'm gonna hit some highlights of capital improvements that we did uh, throughout the year. Um, JC Park Master Plan, that came to this committee. As everybody knows, this is like at least a 10 work, 10 month work in progress, really more than that with all the planning and getting ready for it. But uh, we work, uh, work with Grave Consulting. Um, I believe we have a really great plan um, that was approved by the, this committee in the city um, going forward, giving us a, a roadmap for how to develop JC Park in the future. That was a great project that we did. Uh, Roosevelt Tennis Courts, um, as you can see, we, um, um, some of the pictures, how we did the construction of those, we basically just refurbished the tennis courts, um, a great addition, update to the park, a very well used park in Roosevelt and it is nice to have those uh, tennis courts back in, in good working condition. Um, it's been several years where we actually didn't even, we weren't even able to have a net on one of, one of the courts. So. Um, Moose Park, um, we had monies for a playground um, install. Moose Park had, in the, in the past, had very little per playground. Um, Moose Park formed a neighborhood association uh, just uh, a few years ago. Um, I, it was great to be able to work with a group, um, and, and, and it was a challenge. Again, anytime meeting during the COVID time was a challenge at first before we really had go-to meetings and Zooms. Um, but this, the, the, the product that we have there is, is something that really was approved by that association. So they were talking to people, they were asking, what do you like? Do you like the climbers? What do you like these? Going back and forth with pictures. So very appreciative to that group and getting that done. And you can see the install and uh, what it looks like now in, in winter time. Um, so a great addition to Moose Park. Another area that was, was not part of the CIP, um, but we had um, a $25,000 donation from the Optimus Club of Sheboygan. Um, I've actually been working with that group for, for, for several years um, um, to do this. Uh, so they've been fundraising and uh, they always they always get to the park as a group and, and clean up the flower beds and, and fluff up the mulch, uh, spread out mulch in the playground if we have it. Um, the, the picture to the right, there's some musical instruments that look like flowers and a butterfly, a drum set, a four person, um, uh, basically a seesaw and then an omni spinner. And their concern, and what they really wanted was something that was accessible to, to all uh, skill levels. And they really did a good job at picking those out, um, fundraising. Um, so they, they, that all those additional items came from them. Um, so really improved that um, uh, playground area. So really appreciate that, um, having them as a partner. Uh, reconstruction of the Valrath tennis courts. As you can remember, there was four courts there at one time. 2019, we actually did these, but uh, it got pretty late in the construction and, and it was just really great to get some pictures of them this summer and see them being used. Uh, you see right now in the pickleball courts and the picture there is the Sheboygan County uh, Pickleball Club. Um, and they, they meet at different place areas and, and Kiwanis has been a favorite one for them all year. We actually kept the courts open all the way until, oh, what's that big, first big snowfall? It was more the cold that we were about. So we, we actually were able to keep it open through, through Thanksgiving, yeah. 
Uh, they really appreciated that, but we had to get the nets out of the ground, so we, we, we did end up taking it out before Christmas break. So, a um, couple agreements um, that we've, we've already worked through um, and, and, and one that we're working through now. Uh, making spirits bright was an agreement that came up this year and it was nice to work through that process, work with them, um, work with concerns from um, user groups and come to an agreement that uh, would hopefully, you know, make all users happy. So that was a new five-year agreement. The farmers and mark farmers market really never went through um, our department before, but it makes sense. It's in the park. It was interesting to find out that the farmers market have has been on uh, city property since 1989, I believe. So. Um, it was, it was an interesting agreement to work through. Um, really enjoyed doing that, working with them. I already have, we have a rapport already because they call me, I call them with any concerns or, 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 or whatnot. So that was, uh, we've already have a good relationship and we were able to come to a, a good five year um, agreement there also. Sheboygan A's uh, just went to city council to be referred to public works. Um, Sheboygan A's has a 10-year um, agreement with 10 years of automatic up updating terms. And um, basically keeping that the same, um, the proposal, and, but there was a, a you know, a, after, can you imagine 20 years, you know, a lot of things to cover. So I think uh, both sides did that very well. We went back and forth um, quite a bit um, discussing um, the old agreement and updating the new. I, gotta, I really got to uh, thank Thomas Cameron for or our city assistant city attorney for um, working with me every step of the way there. But um, Denny Moyer, uh, Scott Stangle, and the group there, uh, they did a great job going through things and working with us. And I think we got a really good agreement that uh, should go through public works and then back to council. Um, so those are big agreements that we've, we've gotten through for last year and this year. Uh, the forest report, I'm gonna turn over to um, Tim Bull, and I think the speaker's on already? Yep, speaker's on, he's good. Thanks, Joe. I'm Tim Bull, City Forester. Uh, we had a really good year for 2020. Uh, we stayed busy with, we had plenty to do with the trees. You can see the graph, uh, kind of a year at a glance. We, <clears throat> there's, there's trees removed, we removed a, I think it's a record, at least as far as the, the four years I've been here. Uh, 1,134 trees were removed. Now some of those were hired out, but uh, 743 of those were ash trees, so we're still battling with the emerald ash borer and managing it. But uh, we're really, last year was a big step to, to help get caught up and stay caught up. The treatment for the ash trees has been going well to date. It's 99% effective here in the city meaning we've only lost 26 of the 2,400 ash trees that we treated due to the treatment not working. Uh, there's plenty of them that were removed for other reasons like, you know, problems with something. But uh, to date, only 26 I have recorded as the treatment not being effective. The, I do wanna have a shout out, Joe mentioned it early, but earlier, but the forestry group, we, there's four and five with me Part of the forestry division but we work with the parks department they help us out a lot and the same same goes with the street department like when it snows you know all those people are working together to clear snow but we had a big storm june 2nd and for the weeks to follow we had street department help we had park department almost all of the, all of our guys were out there cleaning up all the trees we lost we had like over 200 trees down from that storm and it was it was pretty devastating, but I, I do want to thank my crew. They're professional and they did everything safely. We didn't have any major incidences or accidents to date so last year. So I'm really proud of them doing that and doing, doing all because some of that storm, especially storm work is, is really dangerous. So we had a really good year planting trees. We had 480 trees planted and we did those ourselves. And I, I stress the importance of that because you, you start the tree off right and you'll have a better tree down the road. 
I feel a lot of the trees we're dealing with now, I don't know how they were maintained or planted to begin with, but we have to work harder maybe if they're, if they're not started out right. So, so we, we, we had a great year last year with 480 planted. We had some money, some grant money from Roots and Alliant Energy that helped fund some of those trees and uh, look to continue with planting at least that number this year in 2021. Uh, we kind of, going back to the ash trees, we're, we focused on removing a lot of the dangerous ash that were untreated. And part of that was we, we held back on the stumps. So there's a lot of stumps out there. There's over a thousand out there right now. And we, we hired some of those out last year. And this year, I feel like we're, we're getting to a point where we're gonna try to get caught up on those stumps where we're gonna hopefully get the rest of our ash trees, not the rest, but the, the majority of the, the remaining untreated ash trees should be removed within the next several months. And then we'll just be dealing with uh, treated ones that may or may not be declining. So I feel really good about how we did last year. And I look forward to this year and the years to come. You guys have any questions? Questions, anyone? Thank you, Tim. Yep. Good job, good job. I'm just amazed that you only lost 26 of those 2,400 yeah. treated. <laughs> it really worked, so good that you did it. Our next meeting is scheduled for uh, May 4th. And uh, with that, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion, but uh, I didn't get a chance to just compliment uh, Tim, Joe, you know, outstanding season. I can't tell you how much the public appreciates having the parks open uh, during the pandemic. It, it just really made a difference for the livability index in our city uh, and the morale to have the opportunity for people to go out into parks and get, you know, it, it, that wasn't the case throughout the country. So thank you for all the effort you guys put in uh, doing that and for uh, all the hurdles you guys got over this past year. So uh, yes, uh, motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.